Joplin is situated on the edge of what's known as Tornado Alley, a strip of America notorious for vicious and violent storms. In the spring, tornadoes are a common appearance. The hospital was busy, uh, especially a really busy regional medical center because a lot of people, it was very common for them to drive 60 or 80 miles in a radius, and that probably encompassed three or 400,000 people. And there weren't any larger middle size or large towns nearby. It was served as a, as a major healthcare center for the community. The four states area is where Arkansas, Kansas, Oklahoma, and Missouri all meet. The city of Joplin services this four state area. Growing up, you know, we would see little tornadoes, but they usually covered a block or so. You know, the sirens would go off. The sirens go off all the time here. Probably heard us as many times as the sirens went off and nothing ever happened. So you just get to where you're not too concerned about those. You figure you can make it to safety or you'll know something is serious in time. It was a Sunday. It was a hot day. It was sunny. There was some talk about bad weather in the afternoon, and the staff was talking about that we may get some warning from the hospital system through the intercom about exercising what they call condition gray. It's a warning that inclement weather, such as tornado thunderstorms, are in the vicinity, and that one should staff-wise help prepare the patients in case of emergencies. Like, uh, basically like rolling thunder, yet kind of a huge turbine engine. I looked up the window and I had to put my hands cup around my um, eyes so that I could see up against the glass. And my eyes had to adjust and, and it was green, uh, gray, it was raining, the wind was blowing really hard. Stations, National Weather Service has issued a tornado warning. The storm has a history of producing funnel clouds and tennis ball size hail. There was nothing really that was in front of me that was close to the hospital that I could get a bearing on what was happening. But as I was able to focus my gaze, about 300 yards north of the hospital, and I saw these, and I knew how big these oak trees were, swaying literally almost at a 45 degree angle and they weren't doing it together. They were whipping back and forth all over the place. And then I noticed something in the foreground off to the left and I began to look and what it was, it was materials dropping out of the sky. Literally a rooftop fell and landed in the parking lot. It was a Sunday afternoon. The weather station had been predicting, you know, a strong chance for storms. Rob tries calling 911 to see where he can help. He still doesn't know the extent of damages as his home is outside of the main path of the storm. When he can't reach the operators at 911, he realizes the potential for casualties is high. The conversation my wife and I were having at that point was something is devastatingly just horrible. It, it, something for 911 to be down, uh, cell phone towers to be just eaten up because of the high volume of calls. You just know that something tragic has happened. But again, you just don't e expect it to be on the level that it actually turned out to be. You're almost in disbelief that it can actually happen to you. I knew this was going to be bad. I just didn't know how bad. So I said, we've got to get to the center bathrooms because I knew how it was constructed. We didn't have a basement. We had little options. So I didn't have time to take anybody by their hand. I just said, we, we've got to get to, to the bathrooms. And I'd looked at the beer coolers, but I didn't want to be around glass because I didn't know how bad this was going to be. If you don't have access to a basement, the best place to hide in your house would be uh, a room in the center of the house that has no windows. As a last ditched effort, I guess you could get in your car and try to outrun it, but it's not advisable. A bathroom, a small bathroom, is always going to be tightly constructed with framing, so that gives you quite a bit of protection. It's a pretty tough box. 
I ended up sliding in on the floor, grabbed the side of the commode, and braced myself. My technician walked in behind me. She wondered what I was doing in a dirty public bathroom on the floor grabbing the toilet. I think I was in the women. I chose that one because it was the one furthest from the outer wall. And uh, it was in the center of the building, which I knew the way it was constructed. It would probably be my safest spot. So she kind of started to crouch down, and then the building just blew up. That forced her down to the floor, but in a good position in a way because she was on her chest, basically. But the thing that she did, she grabbed my collar and she was choking me because it was trying to suck us both off the commode. And I was afraid she was going to get us both sucked out. And so I finally took the one hand here and got her hand down to the base of the commode. Okay, so she was hanging onto the base now. The pressures were so great and the wind velocity was so high 